What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, Does This Look Medium Well To You? Context, I'm a teenager that works at a multi-floor restaurant. Because it's usually very busy, we only have a kitchen on the first floor, and waiters are generally assigned to a ton of tables, we have waiters and servers. Waiters take the orders of the customers and generally handle most of the upfront contact with them. And servers carry the food, usually up flights of stairs, on a tray to the table that ordered it. I am a server. Meet your stunning cast. Me, a random teen female who probably enjoyed this exchange way too much. Karen, entitled lady, probably about 40. Can I speak to your manager hairdo? Brenda, assumedly the mother of Karen, around 60 to 70, reeks of way too much lavender perfume. Steve, my coworker, a waiter with a totally awesome looking man bun. Not his actual name. Jimmy, uh, my other coworker, a server, good friend of mine, once again, not his actual name. Poor dude, Karen's SO. So I was working a normal Saturday evening shift, and we've hit a dinner rush that usually starts at around 5 and runs until 8. This basically means that us servers are running food practically non-stop up staircases, and sometimes have to carry a large tray with the food for anywhere between 2 and 4 tables. So yeah, it's hectic. Anyways, I'm sent to the second floor with 3 table orders, and as we aren't really supposed to have the slips of paper with the specific orders out, as it's considered unprofessional, I was somewhat struggling to remember which table ordered which burger, who had the nachos, etc. I set my massive tray onto one of the foldable mini tables we carry around when we have a large tray, and I set to work picking up foods and announcing what each one was so that the customers could let me know where to set it. I'm in the middle of doing this for a second table when I hear somebody clear their throat loudly. I glance over at them to see a woman, Karen, waving me over, clearly pissed off at something. I smile at her and say, I'll be over in just a minute and I get back to work. I finally reached the third table and was starting to help them when I heard that sound that causes you to just know you're gonna deal with entitled people. Ahem! I nod in her direction and wave shortly to let her know I haven't forgotten her. Ahem! Me, rolling my eyes but keeping up my customer service face and voice. Thank you for your patience this far. I'll help you as soon as I finish here. I need service over here. Okay, I'll only be a minute. Karen rolls her eyes and makes some snide remark to Brenda, who shakes her head at me. I finished serving these really nice customers their food, and they were both pretty loud when thanking me for my awesome service, as they can tell as well as I can what I'm about to deal with. I thank them and one lady mouthed good luck to me. Oh boy. I walk over to the table and put on my best customer service grin. Mind you, as I spoke, I was trying so hard not to sound ecstatic to help them that I'm sure I sounded like a Disney princess or something. Hello, how may I help you? There's something extremely wrong with my food. Oh, I'm so sorry. What seems to be the issue? Karen points at her completely untouched burger. This is the issue. I'm sorry, but I don't fully understand. Could you possibly elaborate so I can help more? Karen rolls her eyes. Fine. She cuts her burger in half with a knife, opens it and points at a tiny spot of pink. Does this look medium well to you? For the record, medium well cooked burgers means there is a little pink in it. Me, laughing internally, trying to keep a straight face. Oh, sorry for the confusion. I'm pretty sure medium well means there's a little little pink in it. I understand how- No, you are wrong and clearly know nothing about how food is cooked. There should not be any pink whatsoever. I am not paying for this abomination. Honey. Don't interrupt me. At this point, I glance at Brenda and poor dude. Brenda is giving me a death glare for whatever reason, and poor dude is just sitting there, pretty pale and obviously uncomfortable. So I decide to try to end it as soon as possible for his sake. I apologize for any confusion. I'm afraid I don't have my tablet with me so I can't enter your order, but would you like me to grab your waiter? Is that even a question? Okay, uh, do you know what their name is? I can try to find them for you. No. At this point, Brenda finally chimes in, acting all high and mighty. Oh, I didn't catch his name, but I know what he looks like. Okay, I can try to work with that. Uh, what does he look like?
like. Well, uh, he's kind of tall, and he's not that good looking. I internally roll my eyes. Brenda, smug as hell. Oh, all right. I remember he had... Not even kidding. She paused for a dramatic effect. She then said the next part like she was disgusted. A ponytail! Me practically wheezing as I was not expecting that. Uh, oh, I think I know who you're talking about. Brenda gives a smug grin. Okay, I'll grab him for you. So I go and find my coworker Steve, the only guy on the floor with a man bun, and tell him what's going on. Not gonna lie, we laughed about it for a minute straight before he went out to deal with him, and I ran back to the kitchen to serve more food. Anyways, Steve ended up re-entering her order, this time as a well-done burger, for free. Sadly, I was not the one that ran that order, but the good news is my friend Jimmy got it and told me about it after the rush was over. This isn't word for word in any way because I heard it from about two hours after it happened. Hi, uh, I have your classic cheeseburger cooked well done. Thanks for your patience. We do apologize for the previous confusion. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't hear what you said. Would you like me to set this? You may as well throw it away. I'm not gonna eat it. Okay, well, the chefs made it for you for free, so would you like me to get you a to-go box? You teenagers never listen, do you? What? I said I don't want it. Go throw it away. You get paid to do stuff for customers, right? Jimmy looked pretty shocked. Look, I don't want to get in trouble for throwing away food if you suddenly decide you want it. So I'm just gonna leave this here and you can feel free to throw it away if you really don't want it. He walked away, ignoring how pissed off Karen was at that. Anyways, us servers didn't hear from them again as we were busy and they didn't order anything else. However, I did manage to pass by their table after they left, and they left it a mess. They literally dumped their leftover sodas and alcoholic beverages onto the plates and pulled the lining out of their nacho chip basket. The burger that the chefs had remade? It was looking like a horse trampled the food in Old McDonald's farm with a bun over here, the meat over there, here, lettuce, there, lettuce, everywhere, lettuce, lettuce. <laughs> the only clean area was where the poor guy sat, and I felt bad for the guy. I mean, he has to constantly deal with Karen and possibly Brenda too. Oh, and guess what? No tip for the poor waiter, but don't worry, because those nice people at the third table I helped left a 40% tip for the waiter to compensate, and Jimmy and I got this story, so all's well that ends well. This story is called, Entitled Mother Demands I Send a Wedding Gift. So I did. My family and I emigrated to the US when I was seven, and for the first three months that we were here, we lived with a relative of my mom's who emigrated a few years before us. The dad helped my dad going to interviews, walked him buying a car, and helped us find our bearings in the US. My family and I are Buddhist, and this family are solidly fundamentalist Christians. While we lived with them, they strongly encouraged us to go to church with them every Sunday, and then when they tried to keep us going to church with them, my family found a temple and started attending that temple. They started treating us like crap. Their sons would pick on me and make fun of my English and told me I won't go to college and probably just end up being a repairman. The mom and their daughter would make fun of my sister for her rapid weight loss and gains. When we found out later this was due to lupus and she had to be hospitalized, they told my mom that the reason my sister was sick is because we worship demons. About 15 years ago, the dad lost his job. My parents, who are now doing well, needed to retile the house. Hired the dad to do it, and when I asked how much they were charged, I was floored thinking they miscalculated. I told them they were overpaying, but my dad just said, we're paying them back. This happened again. Every home improvement project my dad did, he would always hire the dad and would always be overcharged. The crappy thing is, the work is beyond subpar. Like the retiling work, I had to regrout the entire job when I visited one holiday. On top of this, they would always ask to borrow money and never paid my dad back. At this point, I figured my parents paid them back and then some. Frankly, I was completely done with them when I heard what they had said about my sister. One day, I get a wedding invitation. Their middle son is getting married. Not wanting to have anything to do with them, I RSVP, no. About a month later, I got a call from their mom asking why I haven't sent a gift yet. She demanded I send a gift despite my protest and I am not obligated to. Then she mentioned how my family owed them and she knew I can afford to send gifts because I had a well-paying job and how she always prayed for us to be saved. 
When she said this, it triggered the wheels in my brain to turn, and so I told her. She's right, I was being rude, I will send a gift. When I hung up, I immediately looked up every Buddhist, Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, Jain, Sikh, Zoroastrian houses of worship in their area, and made a donation in the happy couple's name. Then I also donated to the Satanic Temple and bought the entire family membership cards and certificates to the Satanic Temple. About two to three or two thirds of a week later, I got a call again from the mom. I answered as politely as I could. Oh, hi, uh, did you enjoy the gift? This was met with a barrage of yelling, screeching, and a torrent of insults. I was barely able to make anything out. Then the daughter called my sister and the middle son called me later, demanding an explanation. I flat out told him everything and was 100% non-apologetic about it. Actually, I did say I was sorry for not being there to see the whole thing go down. When I spoke to my sister later, this is what we're able to piece together. They had the wedding shower at their church after services, and they were opening their gifts then. Well, they got to my gift. Everyone was uncomfortable seeing all the donations to the houses of worship with definitely non-Christian names made in the couple's names. Then the bride's parents flipped out when they saw the membership cards and certificate with the family's name on it, and they freaked out even more when they saw the bride's membership card. The bride's parents demanded she break off the engagement, and she did. Everyone in their church apparently thinks the whole family are Satanists trying to corrupt their church, and they are treated as pariahs in their church. Now people are telling them that they are going to hell. I ran into the mom and dad a few weeks ago at the markets and I looked at them, raised the Satan hand gesture, index finger and pinky finger extended, middle and ring finger tucked and thumb folded over them. They scurried away from me. Was I a butthole for doing it? Yeah, no debate there. But I figure, with how much I donated, I don't think anyone can call me ungrateful or say it's a cheap wedding gift. But really, I am sorry. I wasn't there to see the whole thing go down. People, people, stop trying to make people deep throat your damn religion. Eey. This story is called Entitled Mom Assaults Friend. This is a short but sweet story from about a year ago, and I can't really remember much, but this is basically it. Sorry about any mistakes, I am fairly new. A couple of years ago, I went to a new playground with my cousin. I was 13 and my cousin was 12. When we got there, we tried to find a high place to jump off of. We tried to be as mindful to the other kids and parents as possible, and would only do it when there weren't many kids looking, which was difficult. The other parents were very nice and let us be. If a kid wanted to do what we were doing, the parents would say it's for big kids only. Another kid about two years older came in and joined us. After a while, we thought it would be fun to slide off of the roof of one playground away from the main one and away from other kids. Important side note, the other kid was wearing earphones. My friend was about to slide down when I hear a mom yelling from across the playground. I see a mom holding a baby in her arms, walking towards us. Here's the cast. Me. Crazy mom. Friend. What are you kids doing? Both me and my cousin were shocked to hear this and didn't say anything. You shouldn't be doing that. I know the owner and he will get you kicked off. I should mention, this is a public park and the rules didn't say anything about climbing on things. It's a public park and the rules don't say anything. <laughs> you just said the same thing twice. Okay. At this point, she knew that wasn't going far, so she switched topics. I'll call the police for child endangerment. My friend had his music at full volume and couldn't hear anything, so he slid down, a sizable distance away from the mom. <gasps> What are you doing? My friend didn't hear this and started cheering and giving us the thumbs up when mom grabbed him by the shirt, forcefully enough to knock the earbuds out and nearly drop the baby, and screamed, did you hear me? At this point, I was scared that this lady was gonna punch him in the face, but she let go and looked around to, I presume, a lot of weird looks and walked off saying something along the lines of, I'm calling the police or something. We were too shocked to do anything but just sit there until she left. After she left, we kind of laughed, even the kid who got assaulted, and exchanged numbers so we could hang out later. I regret not calling the police or doing anything, but I was just nervous she would attack me or something. We still do it to this day and have not seen the mom or had any trouble with anyone else since then. That's right, you kids, you do kid things. Don't let the haters hate. <laughs> I used to be really into parkour when I was that age too. Like I set up an obstacle course in my backyard. Well, we had a deck and like a shed and we would just, just screw around, jump between the deck and the shed and off the shed and climb the deck and just do a bunch of crazy crap. I don't know. <laughs> it was fun. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.